You are going to hear a conversation between Angela and Mr. Ray. Angela is applying to join the library. Listen to the conversation and complete the form below. First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will never hear the recording a second time. Hello. How can I join the library? Well, you need to make an application. Would you like to do it now? Yes, if I can. One moment and I'll get the form. Now, I just need to ask you a few questions before you sign at the bottom. Okay. Your full name, please. Angela Mary Price. Price? Yes, that's right. Okay. And your address? Apartment 3, 86 Bridge Street, Pimlico. Bridge Street? That's just near here, isn't it? Yes, not very far. Good. So the postcode must be 2065, right? Yes, that's right. Now, your telephone number. I need both home and work if you have them. My home number is 8763-5142. And work is 84561307. Do you need anything else, like ID or something? Yes, your driver's license will do, if you have one. Right. It's easy to remember. I know it by heart. 4040AC. I'm afraid I'll also need to see it. Okay. Here it is. Thanks. And your date of birth, please? 24 March 1981. Okay. Thanks. That's the most important part completed. But if you don't mind, I'd also like to ask you a few questions for a survey we're conducting. Yes, that's okay. Now you have some time to read questions 6 to 10. As the conversation continues, answer questions 6 to 10. What kind of books do you like to read? Here's a list to look at. Oh, it varies from time to time, but I always like to relax and learn about other countries I might visit one day. I don't like anything too heavy or serious, unless it's about animals or the environment. I'm not really into sport very much. Anything else? Well, I do like entertaining at home. You know, dinner parties. So I suppose you'll have something for me in that line. The pictures in those books always make me hungry, although they never seem to turn out exactly as they look in the books. Fine. I think that's all I need now, except I need you to sign here on the application form. Oh, and I almost forgot. The membership fee is $20, which is refundable if you no longer stay a member. There you are. Do I sign at the bottom here? Yes, that's right. You can borrow books now if you wish, although your membership card won't be ready until next week. So if you want to borrow today, you can pick up your card when you return your first books. That's if you want to take some now. I think I will, but I'll have a look around first. Okay. Take your time. That is the end of part one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part two. Part two. You will hear a conversation between an IELTS candidate and an IELTS administrator. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15.
Now, listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon. I'm applying for a master's programme at the University of Exeter in the UK. I'm planning to register for the IELTS exam at your centre next month. I have some questions I'd like to ask you before I register, if that's OK. Certainly. Would you be taking the academic module? I think so, but I'll have to contact the university just to make sure. You'll probably need the academic because most universities don't accept the general training. And anyway, the procedures to register for the exam are the same for both the general and the academic modules. Good. My first question is whether I sit all parts of the exam on the same day. I don't live here, you see, and for me it would be more convenient to do all the papers on the same day. Hmm. Unfortunately, the speaking part is scheduled for Thursdays and reading, writing and listening tests take place on Saturdays. We can't change the days, I'm afraid. Mm, that's a pity. Well, never mind. What sort of documents do I need to bring in order to register? You'll have to fill in the IELTS application form and bring an ID, a copy of your ID and two passport size photos on a white background. Will any ID do? We only accept original passports and national IDs. That's good to know. Did you say that reading, writing and listening are scheduled for Saturday? That's right. Will I get a break in between the papers? I'm afraid there aren't any breaks between the papers. Each paper takes an hour to complete, so it's three hours straight through. You'll first do listening and then reading followed by the writing test. This is a standard requirement from Cambridge. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20. Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. OK, and how soon after the test can I pick up my results? It takes 13 calendar days for the results to be processed. Can you let me know how much it is and the form of payment? The examination fee is 200 US dollars. You can pay by credit or debit card. We also accept cheques. We only accept cash as a form of payment in exceptional circumstances. And one last question. Can I mail you the application documents? Certainly. You can send all the documents by registered mail to our address. 47 Clover Place, New Rochelle, New York. Could you spell New Rochelle for me, please? Certainly. N E W R O C-H-E-L-L-E -L -L -E. Could I have the zip code as well? Sure. Our zip code is 10806. Thanks. You can also email us at iinquiry at examsmail.com or phone us at 325 9082 I think that's all. Thank you very much for all the information. Bye. You're welcome. Goodbye. That is the end of part two. You now have half a minute to check your answers.
Now turns to part three. Part three. You will hear a discussion between students Maria and Jack. In the first part of the discussion, they're talking about their opinions about some of the things in their universities. First, you have some time to look at questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Now listen carefully and answer questions twenty-one to twenty-six. Two four one four double three one. Good afternoon. May I speak to Jack Robert, please? Speaking, please. Hi, Jack. This is Maria. Hello, Maria. How are you getting on there? Fine. I arrived in Nottingham yesterday. I've just settled down. And I live on the campus of Nottingham University. Oh, that's good. Do you like the campus? Yes, it's beautiful. What do you think of yours? Edinburgh University. It's marvelous. It's on a hill and very close to the sea. I like it very much. It sounds beautiful. Jack, what's the weather like there? Oh, it's fine and sunny. It's said that the weather here is very nice in summer, but awful in winter. What's the weather like in Nottingham? Well, it's a bit depressing. It's been raining since yesterday. I can't go out, so I have to stay in my room. What about your room? Is it a nice one? Yes, it's small and elegant. How about yours? Mine is an ordinary one. It's a twin study room. I share it with one of my classmates. He's intelligent and very friendly. We are getting on quite well. How's your roommate? She's very nice, but a little bit quiet. She likes reading and seldom speaks. By the way, do you like the Scottish food there? Oh, I like it. It's very delicious. Oh, really? I don't like the food here. It's disgusting. It has no taste. I have to cook for myself in my room. Well, Maria, as the saying goes, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. Come on, don't be too choosy. Oh, someone's at the door. I have to answer it, Maria. I'll call you this evening. Bye. Bye. Ellen, a student union officer, is conducting a survey about the university facilities. She is asking two students about their opinions. Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions twenty-seven to thirty. Now listen and answer questions twenty-seven to thirty. I am Alan, and I work for the student union. Now, I'd like to hear your opinions about a few things in the university. We've asked for some volunteers to help us conduct this survey into how satisfied students are with the university facilities. First of all, let's take the lecture rooms. We could score them, for instance, one is excellent, two satisfactory, three rather poor, and four really bad. Robert, you first, please. What do you think about the lecture rooms here? Not so good, I'm afraid. I would score three. They're too small for one thing. Sometimes we can hardly find a seat. Yes, but that doesn't happen very often. Personally, I think they're all right. They're comfortable, and the acoustics are quite reasonable. It doesn't matter where you sit; you can always hear the lecture. I would give two for them. How do you feel about the car parking facilities? Are they adequate? You must be joking! I can never find a car parking space when I need one, and when I finally do, it's a very long walk to the university's teaching building. I'd give it a four. 
I'm afraid I also agree. We need more car parks urgently. This is perhaps one of the major shortcomings of this campus. It gets a four from me as well. I come to the university twenty minutes early just so I can drive around looking for a parking space. What about the computer center then? I think it's first class. The software base contains a large selection of learning programs, language games, and word processing facilities. I would give a score of one. I quite agree with you. It's very modern and also under the supervision of qualified staff who can offer help to us while we work, should we need them. Oh, good. Well, what do you think of the library facilities? Let's say the periodical room first. Well, I've scored that three. I'm sorry to have to say, but, er,、uh, I think the room has poor lighting, and I'm disappointed about that. I've given it a score of one. As far as I'm concerned, it's excellent and well stocked. Thank you, Robert and Mary. Now, let's turn to the photocopying facilities. Hmm, I would give it a score of two. Personally, I think it's all right and it's very helpful. Huh? I would score three. I think it's too expensive for photocopying. And there are not enough machines. Sometimes we have to stand in a line. Okay. Now let's talk about the. That is the end of part three. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now it turns to part four. Part four. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. First, you have some time to look at questions thirty-one to forty. Now listen carefully and answer questions thirty-one to forty. Okay, I'd like to keep this meeting as brief as possible, as I'm sure we all have things to do. I've asked you here just to remind you about this Friday's field trip. This is the first of many field trips you'll be going on, so there are a few rules I'd like to make clear now. Most importantly, I want you all to remember that simply because you are leaving the college. Does not mean that you are not studying. This is an essential part of your course and should be treated as such. There will be two assignments for you to complete whilst you are there, and some extension work you will be expected to do over the weekend. So I suggest you all pay attention on the day. Moving on, remember that we are going to a salt marsh and must dress appropriately. High-heeled shoes and t-shirts are not what I consider appropriate. You need good footwear, preferably boots, and you should bring a waterproof jacket as the weather is unpredictable. It would also be a good idea to bring a change of clothes. There is a chance you will get wet, and a three-hour return journey in damp clothes is nobody's idea of fun. We will be on the marsh from about ten o'clock to about four, so you will be given a light lunch. However, if you want to bring any snacks with you, then please feel free to do so. Although we will be stopping for dinner on the way home. Now this is the fourth time the college has been to Park Drive Salt Marsh, and so far we have never lost a student. <laughs> However, remember that there are twenty-eight people going, and if you are late, you will be keeping myself and your colleagues waiting, and at that time in the morning you will not find me very forgiving. Please try to arrive a few minutes before seven. 
If you're not here on the hour, you risk being left behind. For those of you who are being collected in the evening, you can expect to be back here between 8.30 and 9pm. But do warn whoever may be coming for you that the traffic is unpredictable and it may well be later. Before you go, I'll hand out your assignment papers and briefly explain what you have to do. Now, on the first page, all you are required to do is identify the flora and fauna on the page and find an example in the salt marsh. As I told you on Monday, you will need a camera for this. I recommend one of those disposable cameras rather than something more valuable, as the marsh can get very dirty. Now on page 2, you will be looking more at the bird life on the marsh. You should be able to see what you have to do for this assignment, but there will be plenty of time on the way there to ask any other questions. Well, we'll stop there and I'll see you all on Friday morning. Oh, before you go, just a word of caution. The plants are there to be seen and photographed only. Remember that this is a protected site and we will have to get permission for this trip. If there are any problems, we may not be allowed to go again and you will be spoiling the opportunity for other students. OK, if you have any questions, come and see me later today or tomorrow. That is the end of part four. You now have half a minute to check your answers.